Our second guest today on Channel 18, as you may well recognize, and I know most of you know, is Sue Giselle, the town nurse. And uh, Sue is going to bring us up to date on uh, some of the things you should go over with your doctor, of all people, including summer visits, right? <laughs> So. <laughs> yeah, or not having to wait until the fall when you've got a scheduled six-month visit. Yes. I continue to come into people this past couple of weeks that don't want to bother their doctor. <laughs> they're having changes. Uh, I'm dealing with people that are reporting to me that they're having dizziness. Mm -hmm. I feel that in the summertime, people forget they need to drink a little more fluid than they usually do to stay well hydrated. And one of the signs of one of the reasons for dizziness is that you're not hydrated well enough. Mm -hmm. So even if you're drinking what you drink all year long, sometimes you need that extra half a glass or glass of fluid, whatever it is that you enjoy drinking, to just keep yourself balanced. So if for some reason you bend over or you go to get up out of bed or a chair and realize that your head felt woozy for a minute or you felt a little unsteady, that is absolutely something worth reporting. You call the doctor, let them know that you're having a change, and then they will direct you on either they want you to drink more fluid or if they wanted you to come in, you could have a discussion with them about that. Just because they want you to come in doesn't mean you have to run. It might be something they could work with you and decide you know, when the right time is to come in. But anytime there's a change, you really need to call and report that to your doctor. They appreciate knowing, and just because there's a change doesn't mean you have to go to the doctor. But if you're feeling unsteady, you, you do need to do something about that. I've had that feeling. And I've gone to the doctor. Mm -hmm. And he's just looked at me and said, you're all right. <laughs> and you were. <laughs> <laughs> I said, fine. <laughs> but it's nice to know that you are. Yes. <laughs> and there are different reasons for it. And many people have many different reasons for those types of symptoms. Yes. In addition to changes in your skin, now that we've all gotten a little bit of sun on us, if we've got a little area that has changed over the summer, an area that might even look like a little bit of eczema, and you're not used to having eczema in that particular spot, or, or a little area that continues to bleed, but it seems to heal up and it keeps coming back. Those are things to report to the doctor when you do see them. Mm -hmm. if, um, if anything has changed, it's worth reporting to the doctor. Yes. Okay. I have blood pressure clinics on Wednesdays, mm -hmm. every Wednesday from 9 to 12. I'm happy to check anyone's blood pressure or talk to anybody about concerns they have and help them write a note to their doctor or find a way to effectively communicate with their doctor. Very good. That's a good idea. Okay. And now uh, you wanted to talk a little bit about... Uh, uh, like vaccinations, vaccinations or yes, but flu vaccinations. They're coming up soon. You know, I feel like to bring up the word flu vaccination <laughs> is to put a Christmas tree in my front window this time of year. <laughs> like we're jumping the gun. You know, there's nothing I hate more than in the middle of the summer to walk into a store and see Halloween decorations. <laughs> I agree. However, yeah. this is not a bad time to just briefly touch on the flu vaccination. The flu vaccinations are beginning to arrive at the local pharmacies. Once they start advertising them does not mean that you have to run out and get them. It's also not a bad idea to check with your doctor if you have not in the past to find out when the right time is for you to receive the flu vaccination. The flu vaccinations need to keep you covered through the springtime. Quite often it's March, sometimes even April when we really see an outbreak of the flu. It's not always in the winter time. So if you get your flu vaccination too early, you might not be getting the most effect from having it. So it's important to know when the right time is. For some people, it's as soon as it arrives and as soon as you can get it. But for others, it might be later mm -hmm. into the fall. So it's worth just knowing when the right time is for you. That's a one-time call to your doctor. They can let you know when they want you to have it. Then you'll know for the rest of your life when the best time is for you to be receiving it. Mm -hmm. But just because it's here does not mean you have to be the first one to get it. We don't run shy on vaccinations anymore. I know 10 years ago there were a few, few years where it was harder to find the vaccination, but we don't run out of the flu vaccination. It's, it's difficult to know whether they pick the right one now. Yes. So 
while it may be good, you right. know, even though you, they don't have the right one, there's always that chance, I guess. Yeah, yep. So, you know, when you're, when you're trying to stay well and, and take preventative measures, you know, having the flu vaccination, there are obvious reasons for some not to have it, which would be if you're allergic to it. But if there's any chance that it might help you, it's, it's worth having. Right. Uh, in addition to that, this is a great time to get a prescription for any of the other vaccinations that are preventative for you. So if you have had the pneumonia vaccination and you need a booster, or it might be your first time having a pneumonia vaccination, there are different types to have. It's worth having a prescription from your doctor if that's an appropriate vaccination for you to help prevent you from getting pneumonia or to lessen the effects if you were to get pneumonia. And having a vaccination could be the difference between your being cared for in your own home versus being hospitalized because of a pneumonia. So vaccinations really do help maintain your ability to stay independent and to be well. Well, pneumonia is kind of very serious if it gets into you and it gets to be, it gets to be a serious disease, it can kill you. It, it, it really, well, your respiratory system is, is such a large system in yeah. our body, and when your respiratory system is weak, your whole body is weak. Yeah. So it's important to stay strong. And mm. for some people, the pneumonia vaccination is appropriate. For some, it is not. But it's worth a conversation. And if it is appropriate for you, this is a great time of year before people are ill to be getting these vaccinations. Mm -hmm. And the shingles, in addition to that, the shingles vaccination is something that will help prevent uh, a rash that, that will erupt and uh, some people can identify it quickly, but it stays on one side of your body and follows just a small, a small area. And when, when you do have a rash of any sort, you should always seek medical attention. A rash is there to tell you that something is wrong. But the shingles vaccination will help prevent shingles, and it doesn't mean that you won't get it, but you absolutely could get a much lesser case and feel like you can manage it at home and, and possibly not have any long-term nerve damage from getting the shingles. Now the shingles can last a while, can't they? They can, yeah. they can. Uh, they can last a very long time. You can have residual pain even after the rash is gone. But for most people, it's just a virus and you're able to get through it. And there's ways to help prevent it or lessen it, which is by having the vaccination. Very good. And that you need prescriptions for from your doctor. And most of the local pharmacies are giving them. So before people are ill, before you're putting yourself out there or have a weakened immune system, this is a great time when you're well to have these things done as you'd like to receive the vaccinations when you're healthy. Yes, by all means. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to be getting them late. Right. Yeah. And um, in addition to staying well, if you've been busy this summer, if you've had a lot of company, and you want to just have a little little downtime, I understand that. <laughs> but before you know it, it could be you know time that we're feeling shut in again from the cold. Yes. You know we're shut in sometimes from the humidity, but then in you know five months from now we could be shut in again from the cold. So we're coming into a season in the fall where it's great to get out, and if you haven't made plans to do something or maybe try something new. And start looking for the end of this month, beginning of next month, and find something to get out and keep yourself busy. It sounds like a great idea. <laughs> well, and, and, you know, being social is one of the best things you can do for yourself. And many people don't like to be social. But mm -hmm. there, are, there are other groups at the library, different things here at the community center, the Council on Aging, uh, different acts of volunteering that can get you out of your own four walls and not cause you to have to try and fit in with a group of 20 people that just walked into a room, which is awkward. <laughs> so there's, there's something for everyone. And if you don't know what that is for you, come talk to me and we'll, we'll find something. But keep yourself busy <laughs> and active. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. So is that about it? Yeah, just, just to touch base. Well, that's very good touching. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and the basis of good. So I hope everybody got something from Sue's discussion, and uh, I guess we'll find out. So thank you for your Thanks, information, Paul. and uh, we're glad you came. Thanks.